Hey guys, I'm Neil and welcome to my channel, Neon Black Reviews. So tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about Rob Zombie's first film, which is House of 1000 Corpses. Uh, this film came out back in 2003 uh, and if you've never seen it, uh, the story focuses on these four young kids, uh, two guys and their girlfriends. Uh, they're driving in their car at night, getting low on gas, uh, so they pull over into Captain Spaulding's, uh, which is a roadside gas station slash house of horrors, uh, which is great for them because that's what these kids have been doing. They've been riding around, uh, going to places like this. Um, they say they're doing some sort of um, like documentary or something like that on these places. Um, they're not filming anything. Uh, this story takes place uh, back in 1977, I think. Uh, and the film starts out on Halloween Eve. Uh, but anyway, I guess they're doing write-ups or, or something like that, you know, for, for all the places that they visit. Uh, but anyway, so as you can imagine, uh, the two guys anyway, the girls don't seem to be uh, too interested in any of this. They just seem to be along for the ride, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, the two guys are super excited about this, and then uh, they learn that uh, there's a murder ride. So they buy tickets, and Captain Spaulding takes them on this little ride uh, where he talks about various serial killers, uh, ending with the local legend of Dr. Satan, uh, who was supposedly hung from a nearby tree, uh, and his body the next morning was uh, missing and hasn't never been found. So, of course... Uh, they're really interested in uh, finding this tree, so he ends up drawing them a map, and they go off and, and try to find the tree. So uh, that's as far as I'm going to go with the plot. Uh, don't want to give a whole lot away, for uh, again, for people that haven't seen the film. Um, so let's just get right into it. Um, I'm a really big fan of this film. Um, I think it's Rob Zombie's best film. Um, yeah, I mean, I... <sighs> It just occurred to me tonight, uh, you know, as I sat down to do this review, that this film is almost 20 years old. It came out in 2003, so it won't be too long before it has its 20th anniversary. And uh, that's just really crazy to me because I still think of it as a relatively new film, uh, even though, you know, it was almost 20 years ago that I saw it the first time. And then over the years, I don't know how many times I've watched this film. Uh, it's been quite a few. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of things I like about this film. Uh, first of all, it's the cast. Uh, you've got a lot of familiar faces uh, in this film. You have got Sid Haig. You've got Bill Mosley. Uh, you have got um, Karen Black. Uh, the, the two guys, the two young kids in this film are Rain Wilson from The Office, um, Chris Hardwick from uh, The Talking Dead, uh, and there's other familiar faces in the cast, too. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think everybody um, really puts in good performances. I mean, that's one of the things that uh, that makes this film uh, so successful in my mind is that you've just got some great characters. I mean, Captain Spaulding is uh, just fantastic, played by Sid Haig. Um, the opening scene uh, to this film is uh, very funny. Uh, it's intended to be funny. Um, and it's one of the best opening scenes uh, in all of horror, in my opinion. It's just, it's just so well done. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, it's over the top, and, and it's very funny. Uh, I just love the opening scene uh, to this film. Uh, to the point, you can actually watch it on YouTube. There's, you know, several clips of it uh, that you can search for and find. And I'll sit down and do that. Some days I just need a good laugh and I'll load that up and just watch the opening to this film. Uh, so I really do, really do like the opening to this film. Um, <clears throat> which again, I'm not going to go into, you know, what happens. You'll just have to watch it for yourself. Um, but yeah, I just think it's great. Um, Bill Mosley as Otis, uh, he's one of the bad guys. Uh, in fact, he is the <laughs> bad guy. Um, not that there's only one, but I mean, he's the baddest of the bad guys, I guess you could say. Puts in a fantastic performance. I mean, he is unhinged. He is dangerous. I mean, he's just 
batshit crazy. Uh, just love his performance here. Uh, Karen Black as uh, Mama Firefly, also one of the bad guys. But uh, but yeah, she's great. Um, yeah, just always is, uh, you know. But uh, again, I mean, it's just got a great cast. Everybody does, uh, you know, just a great job. And and the the characters are so varied. I mean, it's like you know, everybody has their own personality. Um, you know, they're um, I don't know. You just have to watch the film again. I don't want to go into a whole lot of details and, and spoil things, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just a great cast of characters. I mean, you know, again, it's uh, uh, it's just a, a great combination uh, that we've got going on in this film. Um, you know, as far as you know, the film itself. I mean, you know, from the opening scene, you're not really sure what to expect. And then, you know, the kids pull into Captain Spaulding's, and again, you're not really sure, but once they get, you know, going, you know, after the tree, it starts to take on, you know, okay, well, this film, it might turn into a slasher. I mean, do they get, like, lost in the woods and, you know, get picked off one by one? Is it going to be one of those stories? Um, but it also kind of feels like it could be something like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where they uh, just run into the wrong people. Uh, and that's, really what it ends up being. Um, there is uh, definitely a strong Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe throughout this film. Um, and that's another thing that I like about this film. Uh, you know, Rob Zombie is a, a true fan of horror. And one of the things that he does is, you know, he, he puts nods in his films, uh, you know, to the films that he loves, the films that he grew up with. And that's really what House of 1000 Corpses is, is just like this, this love letter to the horror films and exploitation films of the 70s. It's not just set in the 70s. Uh, like I said, it has a, a very strong Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe. Um, there's a dinner scene in this film. Uh, you know, there's a bone chandelier in this film. So, I mean, yeah, there's a, you know, if you're just sitting here watching the film, just trying to pick out all the nods, uh, first of all, you'd have to have a pretty extensive uh, horror knowledge to get them all, I think, uh, because there's a bunch there. I mean, I'm sure I miss plenty of them um, because, you know, my memory is just not good when it comes to remem remembering details about films. Um, but this film would definitely remind you of TCM, um, you know, there's obvious nods to uh, Brian De Palma's Carrie in this film, the split screen. Uh, Zombie uses that. Um, there's uh, definitely a nod to the Evil Dead in this film. Comes mainly towards the end. Uh, but just stuff like that. And, you know, and as a horror fan, I like to see this kind of thing. Um, you know, it's nostalgic, you know, it brings back good memories of, you know, older films that, you know, that I grew up with. So, I mean, that's one of the, one of the reasons that I like Rob Zombie's films is because he does this. Um, in this film, he does it a lot, not so much in some of his later films, you know, um, but he still does. And, and that's uh, just, like, like I said, it's just one of the things that, that I like about him and his films, but it's really on full display uh, in this film, there's just so many nods to other films, but at the same time, you know, at least to me, it's one of the criticisms that I hear of this film a lot, that, you know, all he's doing is just copying, you know, other better films and directors, and, you know, if that's how you feel about it, uh, you know, we're just going to have to agree to disagree, I'm sorry you feel that way, because, I mean, I, I think this really is a good film, because what he's done is he still put all this together in a very unique way, um, you, you'd have to do a watch along and just talk about, you know, uh, each little scene as they come up, but there's just so much going on in this film. Um, like I said, you know, it starts out with a very funny scene, but as it, the film continues, there is a still a pretty heavy dose of very dark black humor throughout this film. I mean, it is a serious horror film. But it's definitely got, you know, um, a, a, a dark humor streak running through it. Um, this film changes gears. The last act of this film uh, is extremely different than where, you know, the first two acts of the film were. Uh, not just in tone, but with what happens. 
I mean, it is literally like it just goes into another world. Um, it is just so different. But, I mean, that's one of the things I like about this film is that, you know, uh, the first time through, uh, you're, I mean, you're probably going to understand what it is that you're seeing. I mean, this isn't one of those, you know, super open to interpretation type films. It's just, it just throws this at you all of a sudden. It's like, you know, when the, when the last act starts, you're like, what the fuck is going on now? I mean, not like you haven't said that, you know, multiple times, you know, throughout the film. But yeah, the, the last act of this film is just, I ain't gonna say it's like wild and crazy. I mean, it is, but it's just a completely different uh, tone and mindset. It's almost like it's two completely different films. But it works. It really does. And uh, again, it's one of one of the reasons why I think this is Rob Zombie's uh, best film. Uh, but like I said, you know, he's, he's taking all of these things. Some of it's familiar. You know, some of it is just, uh, you know, things that you have seen in other films, maybe done slightly different. Like I said, there's a dinner scene in this film that's an obvious nod to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But it's not done in the same way. Uh, but it's the same basic idea. Um, you know, where you have your, your victims at the table with the killers. Um, but they're not 100% sure at this point, you know, that, <laughs> that they're really in, you know, grave danger. But, uh, but anyway, like I said, you know, it's got stuff like that in it. But the way that, you know, Rob Zombie puts it together, it feels like, you know, something that you really haven't seen before as a whole. And uh, that's, uh, you know, like I said, one of the things I like about it. I like the fact that it has all of these nods, but at the same time, it is its own movie. Um, you know, if you've watched more than a few horror films, I mean, you know that, uh, you know, pretty much every film that you watch was inspired by something else. You could point to something else and say, this is where I saw that first. Or, you know, in some cases, you may be even be able to say, if I can't say it myself, um, you know, this is where it was first done. Um, so, you know, all films borrow, and uh, this one is, is no exception, but uh, I just like the way that it's done and the way that it is all edited together. Um, again, it feels like, you know, the, the film's from the 70s, because again, you know, this was a, you know, a nod to, uh, you know, 70s horror and exploitation. Uh, it's not an overly gory film, but it does have some, you know, some some fairly gory scenes in it. Um, you know, it's not as wild and brutal as, say, Rob Zombie's Halloween. Um, you know, the violence is there, but it's not at that level that he got to in some of his later films. Um, but it's got some crazy stuff in it. I mean, it's just wild, crazy stuff. I mean, it's some, some of it is, you know, typical of what you would expect in a film like this. And some of it is just like, wow. <laughs> it's just like, how did they think of that? And, and the detail is there. Uh, that's another thing that I really like about this film is, um, you know, like I said, you know, each character uh, is basically, uh, you know, different. They're, you know, it's not just a, you know, a murderous family that they run into. They all have their own personalities uh, that, you know, that, that come out in the film. I mean, um, but the set design is fantastic through this film. There, and, the, and it goes through so many sets. I mean, they took a lot of time and effort uh, to just build everything. I mean, I would like to just, you know, to go to Captain Spaulding's myself just to see all this stuff that he has in there. Because, I mean, it's just jammed all over the place. And it's like every time you watch the film, you'll see something just, you know, off on the side that you didn't see the first time. Uh, you know, horror memorabilia. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a house of horror. So it's like, you know, the, the old carnival attraction stuff that you used to see at the state fair or something like that, you know, alligator man, uh, you know, a hairless monkey, uh, things like that. So, I mean, it's just got, you know, these, these crazy little things that, you know, you used to see as carnival attractions all just tucked inside here. And they're just all over the place. And, you know, and it, and it spent, the, the film as a whole spends very little time in there, but yet they took the time and the effort to put everything, you know, in there uh, to give it that realistic look that they were going for. And, I mean, you know, the, the Firefly House is just, 
yeah, there's all kinds of shit in there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is definitely a great film, guys. I mean, if you're not getting that impression from listening to me, uh, yeah, this is just a great film. So, yeah, I mean, there's just so much that I like about it. Uh, let's see if I left anything out. I mean, you know, the cast, uh, the characters, uh, the story, um, like I said, you know, this uh, this story kind of starts out feeling like, okay, well, I know where this is going to go. It's called House of a Thousand Corpses. You know, it's kind of, you know, yeah, it's doing what I'm expecting. It's doing what I'm expecting. And then it turns into something that you're not going to be expecting. Yeah, I did, you definitely will not see it coming your first time th uh, through. Um, and then it's got a great little ending. Uh, again, it's I'm, I'm not going to give it away. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great little ending. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't end, uh, you know, like you expect. So, um, so yeah, it's just a, overall a great film. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned it's not overly gory. It's not overly violent, but again, it definitely has some what the fuck moments in it. Uh, so it's another thing uh, that I really like about it. Um, but yeah, I think I can just wrap it up and say that, uh, this is my favorite Rob Zombie film. Uh, it's one of my favorite films of all time. Um, as a rating, I give it a solid 9 out of 10. Um, it is definitely uh, one of my favorite films and, uh, and worthy of a 9.0. So if you've seen the film, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Always love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, smash that like. Uh, help this video out. Uh, help me out. I definitely appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click that subscribe button. Click the bell next to it, turn on those notifications, and never miss a review. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.